sometimes you, you can get really plan these things well, and sometimes they just happen. And, uh, those, those, those were perfect answers. Thank you, guys. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Back in the late 1800s, there was a town named Johnstown. It was a modest community in western Pennsylvania about 14 miles downriver from this hunting and fishing club that had been built for very wealthy, exclusive members. Members like Andrew Carnegie and Andrew Mellon and some of the robber barons of the time. In 1879, the club had built this big earthen dam to make a lake for their yachts and for their expensive game fish. And then in about 1889, uh, late 1889, it, it began to rain. And it rained for three days. And after those three days of very heavy rainfall, the management of the club realized that this earthen dam might be in trouble. And so they issued a warning to the town downstream, but people had heard these things before and they ignored it. But it kept raining. And eventually, the dam gave way. The water crashed down the valley, sweeping trees and railroad cars houses up in 20 million tons of water. And by the time all that water had passed through Johnstown, 22 people, 2,200 people had died in the worst American flood in history. <laughs> Uncontrolled water causes terrible devastation. We have seen that. But water, when channeled and directed and pointed in specific ways, is very powerful, very refreshing, very, very, very helpful. Nurturing fields of food, creating beaches to play on, generating rivers of beauty. Now, people can be very similar. Left our own the selfish and destructive ways, we can cause tremendous chaos and damage, but, but when we are directed, when we are encouraged by a holy God, we can become his hands and his feet and his face to the world, and we can transform all kinds of things with him. <coughs> When, dis when, when distracted or taken away from our destructive abilities, we, we stop killing people and we start building hospitals. We start ignoring the right things to do and we embrace people who are wise. We stop destroying relationships and we create connections and, and communities. And today, Moses reminds the people that, that have left Egypt that they were saved by the hand of a strong God. And he calls them to recognize and to spend time resting in that hand and absorbing all the things that the Lord has to give them. See, the power of God working in us as we rest in him changes us. In Psalm 23, we hear King David write, the Lord leads me beside still waters. The blessing of those still waters nurtures life, protects life, comforts life. And those waters that are not, are, are not rushing chaotically, they're waters that are at rest. And our scripture today highlights how rest is a good and godly thing. A thing God gives us to serve us. A, God, a thing God calls us to because we are designed to need it. When we spend time in our personal devotions or, or in study of his word, we rest in his grace and his power and we are, we are led in new directions. 
We're restored and nourished. We are disconnected from the hecticness of the world outside of us. When we rest in holy worship in a place like our beautiful sanctuary, we rest in the beauty of the Lord. And it, it, and it can be transcendent, taking us out of the ordinary. It can give us a taste of his magnificent nature. It uplifts us and it shows us there's more to this world than, than we always notice is going on. And when we rest in the promises of his word, we learn to trust his love for us, to be encouraged and to be hopeful. And to be changed because those promises change us. When we rest in the Lord, we are, we are less inclined to be reckless and, and, and selfish, and we're rather we are equipped to be his hands and his feet and his face. You know, that stuff is so clearly happening at St. Paul. There is water percolating from our family here into the community. And it is changing people. It is making things happen. And it's not just the Christmas boxes we collect or the, the money we collect for the Pregnancy Counseling Center. We have, we have all kinds of things percolating here. We have people planning classes for grief share and crisis care and to connect our school families with, with the life of our worship community. We have conversations happening about how to do how to do Sunday school in the public school system on campus there. We have teachers who are extending themselves into the lives of our families who are not necessarily strong in their belief, but they are investing in those families. We have parents of our students who are rising up to do projects and things around this whole campus to tell the world that we are a place that is alive welcoming and caring for. The people of St. Paul are seeing that when we rest in this place, in what the Lord is doing here, things are different. This week was a busy week at this place, if you were around here. We had graduations, we had award ceremonies, we had a rummage sale, we had a small business day, we had all kinds of activities that were really cool. Every one of those events pulled people who are not normally on our campus here very much, pulled them onto our campus. And every one of those events, I had conversations with people that surprised me. Some of them were people who just said, hey, this place has been so good for our family. Thank you. That didn't really surprise me, but that was great to hear. I had other conversations with people who said, you know, we used to come here. We used to go to school here. We used to be a part of this. And we haven't been for decades. But you know, there was something about this place that really was important. After all these years, this place still impacts them. And then I had conversations with people who had pretty much never been here before, but just sense from things they'd heard, people they talked to, what we were doing, that there was something very special going on here. What's so special going on here is this is a place where the Spirit of God is at work. People here rest in His strength, in His beauty, and in His promise. This is a place that is making a difference in our lives and in the lives of people out there. It's making a difference for Jesus. At fellowship this morning, right after worship, we're going to have some time to eat together in fellowship and also to hear about this campaign of renew and welcome, this construction, this refurbishing, this enhancement of the beauty here, this bringing new opportunities for people to come into our family that, that might not otherwise come to make this place more comfortable to walk into. We are called to do that and we are ready to do that. Because this is a place where God shows his strength, 
his beauty and his power, and where he refreshes and refurbishes people. This is a place where people are changed, and those out there sense that something's going on here. And it is. At the turn of the century, some ambitious minds over in San Francisco made some very controversial, but probably wise decisions. They decided to dam up a valley in Yosemite and build a pipeline from Hetch Hetchy to the city to bring water, the Sierra's water, to the Bay Area. That water is not rushing through gullies and tearing into the granite. It is resting in a deep pool of calmness and then is direct, intentionally directed to serve the three million people of the Bay Area that depend on it over 150 miles away. Water at rest, specifically directed, has tremendous power to serve. Our Lord calls us to rest in Him. He calls us to be with Him so He can nurture us and prepare us and guide us and to serve the people and the plans He puts before us. Are you resting with Him? Do you rest in worship? Do you rest in your daily time, even just a few minutes you spend with Him? If you do, He will change you. And bless you. May your worship with him restore you. May our worship together see his strength and his beauty and his promise poured into us. And when he puts people and plans before us, may we be rested and ready to walk with him in those plans. In Jesus' name. Amen.